Hi, this is Scott Trudeau, Solutions Consultant with Adobe. I'm going to be showing you how to use some of Illustrator CS6's new pattern tools. I'm going to start by creating a pattern out of a spiral. So I'm going to choose the spiral tool. The spiral tool is typically grouped with the line segment tool. Just click and hold down on that and you'll find the spiral tool. Before I, keep, I start making my spiral, I'm going to take a gander up at the top and in this case, I'm not going to have a fill color. I just wish to have a, a stroke color here. So I'm going to choose purple and we'll increase the stroke up a notch or two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply come out here and drag out a spiral. Now, before I let go, you can hold down your control key or command key on Mac and that will adjust the tightness of the coil on your spiral. And I'll just um, take my spiral out to about to about that uh, size. So the next thing I want to do is grab the width tool. This is one of my favorite tools within Photoshop and it looks kind of like a little mustache over in your tool palette. What that's going to allow you to do is hover over just about any stroke and adjust the width of that stroke. So I'm just going to give the spiral a little bit more shape using the width tool. So from there we wish to create a pattern from the spiral. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to object uh, up at the menu choices across the top and choose pattern. And from pattern, I'm going to go ahead and click on the make pattern button. This box tells you that once the pattern has been created, it's going to be placed in the swatches panel. So after I create this pattern and name it, you'll see the pattern over here in my swatches panel. So I'll just go ahead and click OK. Also note that you can choose not to see this message again. So I'll click OK and almost immediately we see the pattern appear. Um, so the pattern, I'll go ahead and call it uh, purple swirl pattern. Or in case we change the color, I'll just call it swirl pattern and name that pattern. And then from the file type, this is the different ways we can lay out the pattern. So we have brick by row kind of offsets that a little bit and brick by column and you have some hex values as well. I'm gonna just choose brick by row you can adjust the width and height if you wish as well and some spacing values what i'm going to do in this case is oh and also notice down here that number of copies so you can choose a number of copies that are going to make up your pattern as well so i'll just choose the five by seven copy i love this button near the top of the patterns panel um, it's pattern tile tool this is where you can adjust the distance and the overlap of the pattern. So I'm going to click on the pattern tool up at the top. And from here, you're going to see these little handles appear within the pattern. And this is going to allow you to adjust the pattern and offset it. So what I want to do is I want the tail end of this swirl to appear as if it's coming out of the center of the, um, the other swirl. So I'm just going to uh, nudge this down slightly. And as I nudge this down, you're going to see uh, that indeed we're starting to adjust this pattern. You can move it out as well. So that looks good. Um, the other nice thing that I like about this is once you create a pattern out of the stroke, that stroke actually becomes an object with both the fill and the stroke. So now I can get my selection tool and click on the pattern and go up to the options across the top. And you can see it's no longer just a stroke. It's now been created into an actual object. So I can... For example, give it uh, a gradient fill and then come over to the stroke and you know possibly give it a, a different uh, stroke uh, color. I'm going to increase the stroke width just a little bit around each of the swirls and you can see that it's creating a really cool effect there. So once done, you have some options across the top so you can save a copy, choose done or cancel out of this. If I choose done, um, it appears as if nothing happened, but in fact, it the swatch uh, panel or swatch up appears in our swatches panel over on the right hand side here. So if you don't see your swatches panel, you can choose window and find swatch from the list here and it will pop out. So now I can take this object and delete it. And in this case, I'm gonna drag out a rounded rectangle just so that you can see that we've added the swatch or we can take the pattern swatch and add it to this object. So now if I simply click on it, you can see that we have added the swirl pattern to the object. What I can also do at this point is adjust the size of the swirl because right now if I took this and simply resize this, you're going to see that uh, the pattern you know, stays the same size, but the object is, is scaled. But if we wish to scale the size of the pattern, 
we can do that using our transform tools. So if I come over here and click on the scale tool, uh, you can tap your S key as long as you're not in type mode as well. You can click on that, and if you use the scale tool off the bat, it, it won't work. What you have to do is double click on it, and it opens up this dialog box. And when it opened up the dialog box, you can see my object shrink, and that's because I have preview turned on. If I turn off preview, you're going to see the actual size of the object. But I want to turn preview back on. And the reason why the object is shrinking and the pattern is shrinking is because under my options, I have both transform objects and transform patterns selected. I'm going to uncheck transform objects. And you can see that the pattern has now been reduced in size. So if I wish to scale this again, I can go up to uniform and maybe increase the size to 60%. And as I tab away from that, you can see the pattern has now increased in size. Or I could you know, take this back to maybe 50%. So you have a lot of control over your patterns at this point. From here, I can just choose OK. And now you have this great pattern that you can apply to any object. Something else that we can do, which is really cool, is uh, open up our appearance panel and apply a background to this shape as well. So if I go to choose window and appearance, you're going to see from my appearance panel, I have a fill. Uh, uh, applied to this object, but I can always duplicate this as well. So if I click on this, you can see I can duplicate the fill and take the bottom fill layer and maybe just apply a color to it. So now I have two fill layers, one that includes the pattern fill and one that includes the solid. So from this point, I think I'm going to drop the opacity just a bit. It says opacity here. I'll just click on the opacity level, maybe drop that down to about 30%. And you can see it uh, drop the opacity of the entire object. So that's really not what I want to do. So let's take that back to 100%. And I wish just to drop the opacity of this fill level. So I'm going to click on opacity, drop that down to maybe 30%. You can see I have now a nice solid color behind the pattern. So again, this is Scott with Adobe Solutions Consultant. Hope this tutorial helped you out. This is the new pattern tools within Illustrator CS6, and you can also get CS6 in your Creative Cloud subscription.